Hey all, Christmas Science of Speed. Since launching our intake air bypass delete kit, we've had a bunch of really good questions about what the IAB system is, why Honda used it in the NSX, and what repair options are available. So for those interested, in addition to those topics, we also had a chance to install and dyno test the kit on this 2002 3.2 liter NSX today to provide more testing results. But the installation had a surprise waiting for us Let's go check it out. All right, so we're gonna get into a little bit of detail here, so hang with me. Now, the IAB system, or intake air bypass system, is the factory design of valve plates that open by vacuum when commanded by the ECU at 4,900 RPM. The plate that contains these valves sits between the intake manifold and this lower chamber. The idea is that at lower engine speeds, the valves are closed, and the small volume increases air velocity into the cylinder. At higher engine speeds, with the plates open, the larger plenum volume decreases vacuum and allows increased air velocity during the intake stroke. All right, so it sounds like a pretty awesome system, and it is. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is that the bolts that secure the plates to the actuator shaft back out over time even though they're swaged by the factory on these tips. We've tried various methods to repair them in the past, but what we've found is often the screws are backed out and the soft metal of the actuator shaft is stripped. It's been suggested that existing plate screws can be restaked, but as you can see, there's no material left to do so, and staking or peening the tip of the screw will simply result in the tips being broken off. Now, the two methods we've considered is installing a longer screw and staking, or if the threads are already compromised, to increase the fastener size and stake those screws. The last method we've attempted is to weld the head of the screw to the plate. However, due to the dissimilar metals, we have concerns about the reliability of both methods. Now, the testing we do in our dyno test chamber uses our all-wheel drive Superflow chassis dynamometer. This dyno is incredibly precise when used properly. We monitor ambient temperature, coolant temperature, and the engine's inlet temperature to ensure reliable results. We found that if we hold these testing parameters consistent, we can do back-to-back -back tests with only about a 1% deviation. For this type of test, we use the taller fourth gear to slow everything down and make subtle changes more visible. For the testing, we've used a 1995 3-liter NSX, and now today, a 2002 3.2-liter .2 NSX. We use the 1995 and later NSX specifically because we can monitor those engine parameters over OBD. Today's test wasn't without a real reminder of why we consider this issue so important to address. Now, the customer brought his car to us for some maintenance and decided to have the IAB system deleted at the same time. We offered to do back-to-back -back testing to provide yet another data point for our customers. But that process ended up taking way more time because when we removed the IAB system, we found one of the IAB plates had loosened itself and jammed into the cylinder next to it. Uh-oh. You got a winner in there? Oh, look at that. The two fasteners actually got sucked into an intake runner and by some miracle were held in place by the normal bypass oil that often coats the intake manifold. Considering the car only has about 80,000 miles, he got lucky and should buy a lottery ticket today. We rebuilt the manifold with a functional IAB system, then tested the performance with the IAB system in place and with the IAB system removed. With the three liter engine NSX we tested, which was a factory engine just with headers and exhaust, we actually found there to be little difference between having the IB system in place versus removing it and replacing it with a spacer that's included in our kit. Now with a 3.2 liter, we actually found the difference to be greater, which probably makes sense considering the additional airflow demand from the larger engine. 
about a six to eight horsepower loss between 3750 and 4750, and a four to seven horsepower gain from a much broader window of 6,000 to 8,000 RPM. So the dyno is a good tool to judge the performance of the IAB system because the test window of 2000 through 8000 RPM tests the IAB system on the NSX between the point before and after it's active. Now it can't test partial load or conditions outside of wide open throttle, but empirically I can say that there's no perceptible difference in throttle response at any engine speed. I think at least for the 3.2 liter, the gain between 6,000 and 8,000 RPM is significant enough that you can feel the difference. I can't feel the difference at 4,000 RPM, probably because it's a relatively small window which may speak to the IAB's true purpose. Perhaps it was Honda's method of tuning out a specific plenum resonance more than increasing low-end torque in any substantial way. All right, that was some really interesting testing that we were able to do at Science of Speed to learn more about how the IAB system works on the 3.2 liter NSX engine. I'm really thankful that we were able to keep another NSX engine in service. In summary, we hope this video provides some more insight into how the IAB system functions, the method and results we've measured, and the real problem that we hope to solve. Regardless of which method you choose, to repair or to remove, due to the number of failures we've seen, we think addressing this issue is really important for NSX owners. If you're looking for a guaranteed solution, the IAB Delete Kit is available now at scienceofspeed.com.